Hello everyone! Welcome to a World Edit Basics tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use some simple World Edit commands to create structures like the ones you are seeing now. To begin with this tutorial, I am going to be using the house behind me to demonstrate a few of the very basic commands. Then we're going to expand on this and create some structures using World Edit. Let's begin with selecting our house. We can select using the wand tool, which we get with slash slash wand. You could also select it by typing out pose 1 and pose 2. Our wand by default selects in a cuboid. When selecting with our cuboid wand, we're going to select the bottom and top corner. This is going to create an area like I have visualized here. There are a couple add-ons to World Edit that visualize this for us, but honestly, it's not that difficult to adjust to it and just visualize it yourself. Now that we have our house selected, we're going to slash slash copy, and let's say we want to paste it over here by our tree. So I'm going to stand where I would want it pasted and type slash slash paste. And as you can see, it, that's not ideal. It pasted it into the ground. So I'm going to undo that. Our house just pasted it into the ground because World Edit can't read your mind when it comes to where you want to paste something. So it pastes relative to your position when you copy it. Therefore, you should copy from a logical position, like for example, the front door. Now we can remember where we copied it, and when we come over here to paste it in, it should pop up right in front of us. Like so. Now, there is another problem related to pasting. As you can see, when we pasted this in, it cut off part of our tree and the vines that hang below us. This is not ideal, especially if you're pasting into terrain. But why does this happen? Well, when we selected this entire house, we also selected all of the air blocks around us, and we don't even really think about the air blocks normally. But if we have air blocks selected, then they're going to replace whatever was previously there with the air that we copied. So, instead of doing a regular paste, we can save this tree by doing paste and then negative A. The negative A removes air blocks from your selection. Now, when I paste it in, none of the vines get deleted and our house shows up right next to our tree, just like I wanted it. Next, I would like to review the basics of the rotate command with you. The rotate command is extremely useful. It works by rotating your clipboard around a circle by however many amount of degrees that you have typed in. The first thing we need to do is select our house. I'm going to type out pose 1 and pose 2 for this because it's easier. Now, it rotates around a central point. The center for me right now in my circle is this gold block right here, so I'm going to stand here and copy. Then I type rotate and the amount that I would like to rotate. Clean 90 degree increments work the best for this. Once I rotate, then I can paste and we should see that my clipboard appears 90 degrees in a clockwise direction. This is what a 90 degree angle looks like. Our entire circle, if we zoom up, is a total of 360 degrees. So if we would like to rotate 90 degrees, it'll rotate from the 12 o'clock hand on a clock to the 3 o'clock hand. We can also go in the counterclockwise direction. So for example, if we copy again and this time rotate putting a negative sign in front of the 90. Now, when I paste in my selection, you can see that it is now on this side. Let's zoom out so we can visualize this. So it went 90 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. Using this command, multiple rotations can be stacked on top of each other. So for example, if I would like to put this house behind me, which would be 180 degrees, I can simply rotate 180. And when I paste that in, it should appear directly behind me, which it did. I could also rotate 90 twice. So for example, right now, if I rotate 90 and paste negative A, it'll appear right next to me. Now, if I would like this house to appear 180 degrees directly behind me, I don't have to type 180. I simply have to add 90 again. So rotate 90, paste negative A. Now we've rotated from our first position all the way around to behind us, and we can add 90 again to get a total of 270 degrees. Now we've rotated all the way around our circle. We can also put in any angle that we would like with this command. However, it does work a lot cleaner using 90 degree angles. That doesn't mean you have to. For example, we could rotate 45 degrees and paste that in. 
And there it is, it appeared right next to our house at only a 45 degree angle. However, our house got a little bit destroyed along the way. I do use off-axis angles fairly often, but usually in larger structures or in organics. You will have to go through and hand fix up your house though if you decide to do this at a non 90 degree angle. Now let's talk about the basics of the flip command. The flip command is basically going to make my house act like it's looking in a mirror, the mirror being this line that I've chosen right here. So I'm going to select my house by typing pose one and pose two again. And then I'm going to stand along the line that I would like to flip along. In this case, my mirror line is going to be this line of diamonds. I'm going to copy while standing on this line. Then I can either type the direction that I would like to flip or I can look in the direction. So I want it to flip from here to here. Now I'm going to type flip while looking in this direction. Then when I paste, my house will appear directly on the other side, like it is looking in a mirror. I could also note that this is the east direction, so I could copy along this line and instead of looking, I could just type flip east and then paste. And you can see that it appears just the same as it did before. Now that we understand the basics of flipping, rotating, copying, and pasting, I would like to add in a few new shapes. These shapes are created using the pyramid command, the sphere command, and the cylinder command. Let's go over the cylinder command first. The cylinder command works by typing slash slash sil. You can then type in a pattern, which is your blocks, two radii, and a height. For my pattern in this example, I'm going to use one, which is just stone. If you only pick one radius, then that means your cylinder is going to have a circle base. I'm going to pick a radius of 8. Then you can pick whichever height you would like. I'm going to do 20 for this example. Now, once we leave our cylinder, we can see that a cylinder has been created with a radius of 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that's our center block. And a height of 20. Very simple. If we would like to add two radii, then all we have to do is type the same command, but put a comma between the radii that we would like. So for example, I'm going to do three and 10, and then a height of four. So you can now see that our X axis has a radius of three and our Z axis has a radius of 10 and our height is four. You can play around with the size of the cylinder that you would want to use in your structure. This is a very useful command. Now let's use the cylinder and rotate command together to create a medieval tower. The first thing that's really important to think about here is that towers usually have an interior, so we would want this to be hollow. To make any of the shapes that I previously mentioned hollow, we simply put an H in front of them. So for our example, we're going to do slash slash H and then sill. Then we're going to type our block. I'm going to use 98, which is stone brick. Now I need to pick out my size. I want to do a fairly small tower, so I'm just going to do a radius of 3, and I want it to be a circle and maybe a height of 20. And we can see that our cylinder has formed around us perfectly. Now I'm going to go ahead and detail just one quarter of this tower. Alright, for the purposes of this tutorial, I went with some very basic detailing on one quarter of our tower. Now, instead of repeating myself on all three of these other sides of the tower, I can simply select this quarter and use the rotate command to my advantage here. So I'm going to do a wide selection in this area, using pose 1 and pose 2 again, making sure that I have the entire thing. Then I need to find my central point. This is super easy for me to do because this is a small tower, but if you need to find your central point and you aren't sure where it could be, remember you can just select each corner and then type slash slash center and then a block. And then the center command will find the center for you and turn it into that block. Now we're going to stand on our center block. We're going to type slash slash copy to copy the quarter that we have finished. Now we're going to use our rotate command, rotating 90 degrees, then paste negative A. This is going to paste 90 degrees this way, completing half of our tower. We're going to do this two more times. And there, as we can see, our tower is complete. That was super simple using the rotate command. I'm now going to show you a quick, simple trick that I use on these types of towers to make very easy roofs. So the first thing I'm going to do for this roof is add a super simple outline along one edge. I'm going to bring this outline up just until the middle point. There's our middle point. 
and here's an outline of what the roof shape will look like. You can look at this and adjust the size as you need to. I think mine's going to be fun. So now I'm going to select the bottom of it and the top of it. Then I'm going to stand in my center, which happens to be right at the top now. I'm going to copy and then use the rotate command, same as we just did, three times. And now this gives us a really good idea of what our tower roof is going to look like. We can simply finish one quarter of it now. For the sake of time, I've also added some details to the quarter of this roof. Now I'm going to select the quarter at the bottom corner and up at the top quarter. To help you visualize what selecting this looks like, because it's kind of at an angle, that's sort of the area that we're selecting. Now, once again, we copy from our top center and then we're gonna rotate three times. Once that's done, our roof is officially complete. Look at that, we've done an entire tower using the cylinder and rotate command. Now I'm going to show you how to create a similar structure using the sphere command. The sphere command works in a very similar way to the cylinder command. In that, if we would like it to be hollow, we put an H in front of it. Then we have some options. We can choose a pattern, which is our block, and three radii. If we want it to just be a plain old circle, then we only put in one radii. Three of them relate to the three axes. I'm gonna put in a pattern of dark prismarine, which is the ID 1682 if you're playing on versions 1.12 or lower. Now, for my radius, I'm going to just put in a radius of simply 7. Because it is a hollow sphere, you can see that the interior was hollow. Let me show you that again. <laughs> Easy, and that's so perfect for creating a structure. Now, to turn this into a structure, I only want the top half of it. Meaning, I need to select the bottom half. So, I'm going to set my position at the very bottom, and then I'm going to try to aim for about the halfway mark over here. Then, once I have my position set, I simply set air to the bottom half. If this doesn't work out for you, you can simply undo and set your positions again in a better spot. Now that we have half of our sphere up in the air, we can start the detailing process. However, I would like to move this a little closer to the ground to work with it. For this, I could use copy, paste, or cut and paste, but I'm actually going to show you guys the move command real quick. I started by selecting an area all the way around my sphere. The move command works by typing slash as move the number of blocks and then looking in the direction that you want it to go. So for example, if I would like this to move down, I simply look in that direction and type slash slash move, let's say 10 blocks. And you can see that my sphere moved down by 10 blocks. This can work in any direction that you would like to look. Now that my sphere is closer to the ground, I'm going to begin detailing it. All right, now that I've got satisfactory details on only one quarter of my gazebo, I'm going to select these details. Now I'm going to stand in the center of my gazebo and copy standing here and then rotate the exact same as we did before. And there we go, our details rotated all the way around. And our gazebo is complete! That's such a simple way to create structures in your world. I love this technique. Creating towers and small structures has been a lot of fun, but it's time to move on to something a little bit larger. I'm going to wireframe a structure out and then bring you all in to show you the commands. Alright, here's the basic outline of a structure that I would like to build. The first thing I'm going to do is the walls. I'm going to select my position for my walls, one in the top corner and one down here in the bottom corner. Then I'm going to type the command slash slash walls. This command will create walls around those points that I just selected, perfectly filling in my structure and leaving a lovely hollow interior. Now I would like to simply fill in the roof. To do this, I'm going to fill in just one simple section of this roof. Then I'm going to count how many blocks need to be filled in. To do this, I'm just going to select along the top, and this number down here is the amount that we need to go, which in my case is 23. Now I'm going to select this area that I just filled in, on the top and on the bottom. I'm going to stand up at the top where I selected it, and I'm going to look in the direction that I would like to fill in. When looking in this direction, I'm going to type slash slash stack and the number of blocks that need to be filled in, in my case, 23. Now, as you can see, our roof has filled in perfectly on one side. What an easy way to do roofs. The stack command is so useful for stuff like this, but it can also be used in other scenarios. Let me show you one real quick. Let's say we have this modern skyscraper here, and I would like to stack this pattern up on top of itself all the way up the tower. 
all I'm going to do is simply select this pattern. Then, once I have it selected, I'm going to stand at the bottom and look up in the direction that I would like it to go. Then, I'm going to type stack and the amount of times that I would like it to stack. Before, we were only stacking a one block thick area, so we went the amount of blocks. This time, I'm selecting a lot more than that, so I'm going to go for a much lower number, like for example, three times. And now, you can see, if I set up my speed, that our pattern has stacked three more times up the tower. This is so useful for stuff like modern skyscrapers. Okay, now let's turn our attention back to this structure, where I filled in one window. I'm now going to select this window and hopefully copy it down the line so that I don't have to keep repeating myself. Now, remember what I said about paste working relative to the position when you copy it. So, we have to copy from a position that makes sense. That position could be the middle of your wall here, or the edge of the pillar. For example, this spot is the same as this spot, which is the same as this spot. Pick a spot that you're going to be able to remember and copy from there. Slash slash copy. Slash slash paste negative A. And just like so, we have repeated our window. And there we go. One wall is complete. Now, I would like to get these windows all the way over here on the other side, as well as the roof. So, let's select the entire thing. I'm going to select down here at the bottom corner and then up here at the top corner. Now that I have that selected, I'm going to be using the flip command to flip this side over to the other side. So I need to stand on my mirror middle line, which is this line right here. This is easiest to find if you're working with odd numbers, but I will give you an example of working with an even number. Standing on this line, we're going to copy, then look in the direction that we would like to flip, type flip, and then slash slash paste, and then negative it. And with that complete, we can see that we now have a completed roof and windows on both sides. Now that we've flipped this larger structure, I would like to give you another example using a structure that has an even number. Alright, so here's our example of a structure with an even number for our roof. So for this, we have two blocks that act as our middle. Same as before, I'm going to select one half of our structure. Then, I'm going to stand on one of the middle points, the one closest to the side that we would like to flip. From this side, I'm going to copy, and then I'm going to look in the direction that I want to flip, and type flip. Then, I'm going to move onto the other block in order to paste it. If I don't do this, it'll flip just as if it is an odd number. Let me give you an example of that. Right, so if I was to paste standing on this gold block right here, our house has suddenly turned into an odd number house instead of an even number house. So make sure you move over to the second block when flipping with even numbers. Before I end this tutorial, I would like to show you one more command within Rotate that is extremely useful. Let's say we have this gear here, and I would like this gear to be vertical instead of horizontal. I can simply select the gear and rotate it. You'll notice when I type slash slash rotate without any parameters that it gives me these parameters that I can put in. Y axes, X axes, and Z axes. This means I can choose to rotate along any axes. So if I would like to rotate it up into a vertical position, all I have to do is copy it. And then rotate 0, 90, 0. This means it's not going to rotate at all along two of the axes, but it is going to rotate along one, making it vertical. So, when I paste it in, you can see that it, our gear is now in a nice upright and vertical position. I hope this comes in handy for some of you. Alright, that is everything that I wanted to show you with the basics of structure making using WorldEdit. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial, I hope it was super helpful for you in your world, and maybe you picked up something that you didn't know. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Let me know if there are any more basic WorldEdit tutorials that you would like to see. Bye bye